Whether you're studying to pass the real estate exam or computing the mortgage payment for a client, you'll need to know a basic level of math as a real estate agent. This video will walk you through the type of real estate math skills that you'll find in the state exam, as well as every real estate transaction that you take on once you earn your license. What's going on everyone? I'm Kyle Handy, a realtor and team leader here in San Antonio, Texas. I help teach other realtors, team leaders, and brokers how to grow and scale their real estate business through digital marketing, content creation, social media, as well as tried and true methods. And if you want proven strategies that you can use to get more leads, closings, and scale your team, you'll love this video. Keep watching. Before I get started, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that like button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, consider subscribing if you haven't already as I release a new free training three times per week as well as go live every Tuesday and you won't wanna miss any of it. Finally, if you'd like my free real estate business plan template to track your sales, commissions, profit and loss, net worth, and budget, head over to kylehandy.com forward slash business plan to download it today. Okay, now let's get started. The first real estate math formula we're gonna talk about is the loan to value ratio. This is the most common math problem that you'll likely come across in your real estate career. The loan to value ratio follows this formula, loan amount divided by the assessed value of the property, which equals your loan to value ratio. The answer to this basic math problem gets expressed in a percent. So a home with a $100,000 value and an $80,000 loan would have a loan to value ratio of 80% because $80,000 divided by $100,000 equals 0.8 or 80%. Number two, the 2836 rule, which is your qualification ratios. When working with a home buyer, knowing how much they potentially qualify for is extremely important. The 28 side of the 2836 rule says the buyer can qualify for 28% of their gross monthly income before taxes. So for example, if the home buyer earns $10,000 monthly, they would qualify for a mortgage payment of around $2,800. The 36 side of the rule takes into account additional debt payments, car loans, student loans, credit cards, etc. Here you can still multiply 10,000 by 36% to get $3,600. This means that their total debt payments plus mortgage need to be below $3,600. Number three, down payment. Whether a buyer is buying an investment property or a home to live in, they'll need to have a down payment. To determine the down payment, use this math formula. Sales price times percentage down equals down payment amount. So if the sales price is $100,000 and the buyer is using the traditional 20% down payment, you'll have to multiply $100,000 times 0.2 which equals $20,000. Number four, the capitalization rate. In an investment property, the cap rate or capitalization rate is the amount the investor makes and takes home as income on the property. Knowing the cap rate helps an investor figure net operating income and keep cash flow positive while managing rental properties. Use this formula, net operating income divided by your purchase price equals the cap rate. So for example, say you have an income generating rental property that costs $500,000 and brings in $50,000 in rent. However, it costs $15,000 to maintain over the year. Calculating the cap rate would look like this, 50,000 minus $15,000 divided by $500,000 equals 7%. Number five, return on investment. Return on investment tells you how much you make on a particular investment when you sell it. To calculate ROI, use this formula. Return on investment equals the final value minus the initial cost divided by the cost. So if you purchase a property for $250,000, then sell it later for $280,000, your return on investment would look like this. 280,000 minus 250,000 divided by 250,000 equals 12%. Keep in mind that this is gross income on the sale. Any repairs the investor put into the property would also impact how much you make on the sale. Number six, prorated taxes. Usually, most buyers will pay a prorated tax amount at closing. To prorate taxes, you must determine how much tax is remaining on the property for the calendar year. To do this, find the remaining number of days in the year and divide it by 365. This will give you the percentage of the tax bill that the buyer still needs to pay. Then, 
Take that percentage and multiply it by the amount of tax due on the property. This will give you the amount of property tax due at closing. Number seven, calculating mortgage payments. And we'll start by calculating just the principal and interest. The mortgage principal is another name for the initial loan amount. This is the full amount that the buyer is borrowing from the bank. For example, if the buyer had $150,000 in cash to make a 25% down payment on a $600,000 home, they would need an initial loan amount of $450,000 from the bank. To determine the monthly interest rate on a home, you'll need to know the annual interest rate for mortgages in your area. You can get this number from any mortgage lender in your market. Then divide that number by 12 to get the monthly percentage. So for instance, if the annual interest rate were 3%, then the monthly rate would be 0.25%. If you're looking to calculate the monthly mortgage payment by hand for the real estate exam, you'll need to use the following formula, which I'll add right here. In this formula, M equals your monthly mortgage payment, P equals your loan amount, R equals your monthly interest rate, so divide your annual interest rate by 12 to get this number, N equals the number of payments. Usually this is 360, which is 30 years times 12 months. For our example above, let's say the annual interest rate was 5%. To calculate the monthly mortgage payment by hand, you would use this formula. And in total, this would give you a total monthly payment of $2,416. Obviously, if you're working with a client and not answering a question on a real estate exam, it's much easier to simply use a mortgage payment calculator. I like to use Zillow's mortgage payment calculator as you can add in PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, insurance, HOA, taxes, etc. Or if you're looking to download an app to your phone, I'll add my preferred app in the description below. Next, let's talk about how to calculate mortgage insurance. Private mortgage insurance, or PMI, is required if the buyer makes a down payment below 20% of the home sales price. This cost is added to the monthly mortgage payment. The PMI cost will depend on what the lender states in the loan estimate, but it is typically between 0.2% and 2% of the mortgage principal. Usually, the PMI ends once the buyer has 20% equity in the home. Some factors that determine PMI cost are the loan length term. A shorter term means monthly payments will be higher, but 20% equity will be reached sooner. Even if the buyer doesn't meet the 20% down payment, the more they can put towards their down payment, the lower their PMI will be. A higher credit score will get the buyer a better deal on their private mortgage insurance. There are four types of private mortgage insurance that you should generally be aware of. Borrower paid mortgage insurance, BPMI. This is the most common type and the borrower pays for it each month. Lender paid mortgage insurance, LPMI. The lender pays for the insurance but charges the buyer a higher interest rate. Single premium mortgage insurance, SPMI. The buyer pays a lump sum at closing for the insurance. Split premium mortgage insurance, SPLMI. The buyer pays a smaller lump sum at closing and then pays monthly for the rest of the insurance premium. Next, you'll need to determine the cost of homeowner's insurance. This will depend on a variety of factors, including the home's location, potential exposure to natural disasters, home's value, the coverage level, the deductible amount, the age of the home, the roof's condition, any past claims, and the type of policy. And there are eight types of homeowner's insurance. On average, homeowners in the US can expect to pay around $1,000 a year for homeowner's insurance. But to get an accurate assessment of how much this will cost your buyer, you'll need to get a quote from an insurance company. Buyers may also be able to qualify for cheaper insurance rates by adding some safety features to their homes, such as smoke detectors, storm shutters, or a new roof. However, ultimately the price will depend on the above factors. Lastly, you'll need to know how to calculate property taxes. While the government will charge property taxes automatically, it's still a good idea to understand how much the buyer can expect to pay. How much the buyer owes will depend on two numbers the tax rate in the area they live in, and the value of the home. The home's value isn't just the purchase price that the buyer paid. To find the home's assessed value, you'll have to get in touch with the tax assessor who determine its value or look up the relevant property records. Once you have the assessed value, multiply it by the tax rate to get the yearly property tax bill. This number is then divided by 12 to get the monthly amount that will be added to the buyer's mortgage payment. Keep in mind that some areas also charge a transfer tax whenever a home is sold 
This is generally paid by the seller, but it's still something that you should be aware of. Number eight, the gross rent multiplier. The gross rent multiplier or GRM is a calculation used to determine a property's value. It takes into account the annual rent income and the property's purchase price. To use the GRM, you'll need to know the following, the annual rent income, and the purchase price. The gross rent multiplier formula is purchase price or value divided by the gross rental income. So for example, if a property is purchased for $200,000 and the annual rent income is $24,000, the GRM would be 200,000 divided by 24,000, which equals 8.3. This number can then be compared to similar properties in the area to see if the purchase price is fair. Generally speaking, a lower GRM is better as it indicates the property is undervalued. Number nine, price per square foot. This is likely one of the easiest but most used real estate math problems you'll solve throughout your career. You'll use it both when valuing commercial and residential properties. To calculate the price per square foot, simply take the sales price or value of the property and divide it by the square footage. For example, if a home is 2,000 square feet and is purchased for $400,000, the price per square foot would be 400,000 divided by 2,000, which equals $200. This calculation can also be used to find how much a property is worth per square foot. So if you know the sales price or value, you can use this equation to find out the approximate square footage of a property. By the way, if you're just getting started in real estate and wondering how long it takes to get your real estate license, check out my other video that I'll link above. Awesome. Well, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Also, hit that thumbs up button and give this video a like as it helps my videos reach more real estate agents looking to grow their businesses. And by the way, if you're interested in partnering with me at eXp Realty, head over to my partner page and check out the exclusive benefits that you receive. I'm passionate about helping agents win. I've already partnered with nearly 100 agents across the country to help them increase their real estate business and generate more leads and I'm never too busy for you. When you partner with me, you receive free access to all of my current and future paid courses, which you can find on academy.kylehandy.com. Additionally, you get access to my private Facebook community called The Dream Team, where I go live multiple times per week. Head over to kylehandy.com forward slash partner for more information. Finally, if you've made it this far, I want to thank you. Type hashtag end crew into the comments to let me know that you watched to the end. And now I want to turn it over to you. How do you feel about real estate math? Do you have a hard time with math or find it easy to learn? Until my next video, be well and get out there and sell some homes.